When the device is turned on, the default mode will be dual chamber pacing at a standard set of parameters that are useful for pacing most patients. And below are some modes, and you can see here that the dual chamber mode is highlighted. The first number is the rate, and this is controlled by this control here. The numbers in the blue panel are parameters related to atrial activity. The bottom one, which is where the yellow flashing light is, is the output, and that is this control here. You rotate the control in order to change it. So if you want to increase the output, you just rotate it. The other control is the sensitivity. And invariably, for most patients, this is set at one millivolt. The parameters in the white panel are related to the ventricle and the large control here is the output and this can be changed all the way up to 18 volts as can the atrial output and the other control here is the sensitivity. The control in the middle is the AV delay that's the time between an atrial pace being delivered and a ventricular pace being delivered and this is tagged to the rate. So as the rate is increased the AV delay decreases. So when I'm pacing at 90 something beats a minute, the AV delay is down at 150. And this is same, this is the same as a normal physiology of a normal person. As your heart rate goes up, your PR interval or AV delay uh, decreases. If I were to put this into VVI mode, uh, it removes the numbers that are not related to anything to do with the ventricle and it leaves me with ventricular output, ventricular sensitivity and the rate. And the mode is indicated at the top as VVI. If I were to put this into AAI mode, that's atrial single chamber pacing, the rate is at the top, the sensitivity is in the blue panel and the output is in the blue panel. And all the other numbers disappear uh, as they're not relevant to AAI pacing. And if I press dual chamber pacing, it remembers the ventricular parameters, brings those back into the device.